We'll ask to impart A to show this information on a Venn diagram. So I'm going to label this one history and this one English. We're told there are 25 students in total. Okay, let's just make a note of that. The number of students who study both history and English is three, so I can put that in the middle, dealt with. The number of students who study neither is 14, so that can go on the outside. And then the number who study history but not English is three times the number who study English but not history. So if I just call this one x, then this would be 3x. And we can create an equation. We can add them together, 4x plus 17, and that must equal that total number. So finally, that's coming into play. So 4x will equal 8, and x will equal 2. And then I can just get rid of that and change that to 6, and change that to 2. Brilliant. So to determine the probability that students selected at random studies English, it's going to be any of these five. And there are 25 in total, so 5 over 25. And the second part of this question steps things up quite significantly because we're picking two people from the class at random. They can't be the same person. And then we're given that exactly one of the two students studies English and asked to determine the probability that exactly one of the two students studies history. Okay, so might, that might need reading a few times to be fair, but we're trying to find the probability of history, not history, or, or not history, history, but I'm just going to say this is like, that's the same thing, given English, not English. Again, I'm not saying the first person has to study English, I'm saying it could be either of them. I'm just trying to make it simple rather than writing lots of things down. So that means I'm just going to write maybe 1 H and 1 not H. And this means 1 E and 1 not E. Now, the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A and B all over the probability of B. It all comes from the fact that we're saying, right, this is A and B. And we're saying that B has happened, so I can basically ignore that and ignore that. But now I'm interested in um, A happening, so it's the middle bit, but now I'm dividing just by the probability of B because it's like a reduced sample space. That's a very quick explanation of it, but this is a this is an important formula condition for conditional probability. So in our case, it's going to be the probability of H, H and English, not English, all over the probability of English, not English. So let's deal with these one at a time. Probability of English, not English. Now I can either have the first person studying English, 5 over 25, and the second person not studying English, which is 20 over 24. Or I can have the first person not studying English, that would be 20 over 25 times the second person, sorry, did I say the first person not studying English? So 20 over 25 times the second person studying English, so 5 over 24. Actually, they're the same thing, so we can just times by 2. That is the probability of exactly one person studying English. Right, now for the next one. So I just think this needs careful consideration. Let's say the first person is going to study history, but they're just going to study history and not English. So that's 6 over 25. Now I need to make sure the second person doesn't study history but that they do study English. So that's going to be 2 over 24. So that is, um, ju I don't really know how to write it. It's, um, oh yes I do. So it's H and not English. That's that first person. And then English and not history. So you can see, yeah, that works out. Okay. Now I could instead have them 
studying um I could select the first person to study English but not history and the second person to study history and not English so I again need to times by two because they could swap around just in the same way that I times by two here for the English not English okay so I could write the whole probabilities out but I think that's that's okay right now uh, we've dealt with basically these two these have to go together because one's history not English and the other's English not history but the other way of considering it then is to say that the first person studies history and English that would be 3 over 25 so history and English which means the second person would have to not study either so I'm going to be timesing by 14 over 25 not history not English and again because I could pick the not history not English person first and then the history English person first I can times by two again oh we're nearly there I can actually factorize out the two so it's going to be six over 25 times two over 24 plus three over 25 times 14 oh sorry that should have been a 24 I made a little mistake there And then I'm dividing by this one that I found before. Now, of course, you can just put this in your calculator. I'm going to show you how you can cancel it down quite significantly without. So we can divide through by 2. We can divide or we can times top and bottom by 25. We can basically get rid of these times top and bottom by 24. And so we're actually going to get 12 plus 42 over 100 which is 54 over 100 which is 27 over 50 or you might want to write it as 0.54 and that is our answer I'm just going to quickly talk for it again because I think this is quite complicated so Given that exactly one of the two students studies English, determine the probability that exactly one of the two students studies history. The first thing I did was use this idea of conditional probability and write it like this and then like this. I worked out the probability that one person studied English. So it was English, not English or not English, English. And that's where this came from. And then, yeah, the hardest bit was that one studies history, one not history and one studies English and not English but they could you could get it in different ways so we looked at the purple ones where we had history not English and then English not history those two could go together so we did 6 over 25 times 2 over 24 but we could have it the other way around where we got not uh, English not history picked first and then history not English that's why times by 2 just like above and then we looked at the ones in orange where one person is studying history and English and the other person is studying neither. We times them together times by two because of the possible ordering. Um, and that is all the different ways of getting um, two people where one is studying history and one is not, and one is studying English and one is not. We did a division. You can actually cancel it down without a calculator. And that gave that answer, 0.54. Brilliant.